Hello everyone, in today's video, we will be learning about the condyler cartilage. You probably have tried to mug up and learn certain pointers about the condyler cartilage till now. But this particular video addresses and answers the various words, whys and hows. So starting with the most basic term, the cartilage. So cartilage is a type of connective tissue which is tough and flexible. It lines the joints and also gives structures to various parts of the body. Histologically, based on the number of cells and the nature of matrix, the cartilage can be divided into elastic, hyaline and fibrocartilage. So given on your screen is a simplified histological diagram to describe the same. So it can be observed that as we move from elastic to hyaline and to the fibrocartilage, the number and the content of the fibers is increasing. While if we move in the opposite direction, that is from fibrocartilage to hyaline and to elastic cartilage, the number of chondrocytes is increasing. Another point to note is that greater content of the fibers is related to the toughness of the cartilage, while lesser content makes the cartilage flexible. The given table enumerates the various features of these three types of cartilage based on the appearance, location and function. Let's have a look. So if we talk about the appearance of elastic cartilage, it has a light staining matrix, lacunae with chondrocytes and dark staining elastic fibers. Hyaline cartilage appears as a gauzy matrix with groups of lacunae and chondrocytes and collagen fibers that are invisible. The fibrocartilage appears with thick bundles of collagen and rows of lacunae with cells. Talking about the location of these cartilage, so elastic cartilage mainly appears in the auditory tubes, the epiglottis and the external ear. The hyaline cartilage is present at the sternal end of the ribs, the articular surfaces, tracheal rings, larynx, nasal septum and it's also a skeletal precursor. While the fibrocartilage is usually seen in the intervertebral discs, pubic symphysis and joint capsules. Now talking about the functions of these particular cartilage, so the elastic cartilage provides flexibility with recoil property. The hyaline cartilage provides smooth surface for articulations and also provides support, while the fibrocartilage provides tensile strength and resists compression and bears weight. So the important cartilage for this particular video is the hyaline cartilage and let's see why. Now because in this video we are discussing the condylar cartilage which covers the articulating surfaces of the temporomandibular joint, it becomes imperative to understand the cartilage found on the other articulating surface of the body. So this brings us to articular cartilage which is a type of hyaline cartilage usually 2 to 4 mm in thickness. It does not have any blood vessel, nerves or lymphatics and has a limited capacity for intrinsic healing and repair. This specialized connective tissue is usually found on the diarthroidal joints. So these joints, if you are wondering, are actually freely movable joints characterized by their mobility and a joint cavity within a synovial membrane encased in the joint capsule. One such example is the knee joint with its femoral condyles. So the principal function of this cartilage is to provide a smooth lubricated surface for articulation and to facilitate the transmission of loads with a low frictional coefficient. Now keeping the previous basic discussion in mind, we will now understand and dive deeper into our main topic of discussion which is the condylar cartilage. So as we are aware, it facilitates in the articulation with the TMJ disc and it also reduces the point loads on the underlying bone. So during function, it acts as a stress absorber and it allows for the functional joint movements. Therefore, we can say that the functional role of the mandibular condylar cartilage is very similar to the articular cartilage found elsewhere. However, it is because of the more fibrous nature of the condylar cartilage which is responsible for some of the differences found. Cartilage based on the embryonic origin can be either primary or secondary. The primary cartilage is composed solely of collagen type 2 and grow via interstitial cell proliferation. As compared to the secondary cartilage which are composed of both type 1 and type 2 collagen and grow via appositional proliferation. Ontogenically, the mandibular condylar cartilage is a secondary cartilage. 
the mandibular cartilage differs from other primary cartilage for example the articular cartilage the nasal septum and the growth plates of the long bone in various ways number one is that it is a heterogeneous tissue which contains fibroblast osteochondral progenitor cells as well as chondrocytes second there is co-localization of both types that is type 1 and type 2 of collagen which might be an adaptation to the complex biomechanical environment found in the mandibular cartilage area and third is the presence of a hybrid layer of chondroid bone which usually is noted in the peripheral condylar cartilage. Now this chondroid bone regulates the different rate of bone formation in intramembranous as well as endochondral ossification. As discussed previously, although functionally similar, microscopically the mandibular cartilage is dissimilar to the articular cartilage especially regarding its constituents. So the surface of the mandibular cartilage contains primarily type 1 collagen and type 2 collagen is present in the matured layer beneath the fibrous layer whereas the articular cartilage in general is primarily composed of type 2 collagen. The mandibular cartilage is largely a fibrocartilage covering the hyaline cartilage layer and is composed of multiple zones. These four zones are fibrous, proliferative, chondrocytic and hypertrophic zones. The topmost zone is the fibrous zone composed of flat fibroblast like cell. This zone consists of dense fibroelastic connective tissue with its collagen fibers oriented parallel to the articular surface in an anteroposterior direction. Now this zone functions as a protective covering and also as a joint boundary lubricant but it is not related to the deeper chondrogenic differentiation. The second layer from top is the proliferative zone. Now this particular layer acts as a separating barrier between the upper fibrous zone and the underlying hyaline like mature hypertrophic zones. This layer is further divided into two sublayers, the upper sublayer with polymorphic cell type and the lower sublayer with flattened cell type. One very unique characteristic of the condylar cartilage is that there are multi-lineage potential cells which can be observed in this particular zone. Now these cells can differentiate into osteochondral or chondroprogenitors or even the fat progenitor cells. The third layer is the chondrocytic cell layer which contains chondrocyte at various stages of maturation. This particular zone also displays increased active deposition of the cartilage characteristic matrices and increased synthetic activity of the collagens, the proteoglycan and also the glycosaminoglycans. The deepest layer is the zone of hypertrophy which is essential for the replacement of cartilage with bone by the process of endochondral ossification. Eventually the chondrocytes increase in volume and initiate the calcification of the surrounding matrix. So this matrix is then invaded by the bone marrow vasculature which degrades the cartilaginous matrix and incorporates the newly secreted bone matrix into the cartilage remnants. So this process of chondrocyte hypertrophy contributes most to the condylar growth. So if you have watched my previous video on the growth of mandible, you know that condyle is one of the three locations of mandible which exhibits endochondral growth. So as the condyle grows, the direction is towards its articulation into the face of direct pressure. So intramembranous type of osteogenesis has a low threshold for compressive forces and this direct pressure is beyond the tolerance of bones vascular soft tissue membrane. Therefore, endochondral growth is required for this particular articular part of the condyle which is marked as A in the adjacent figure. Now this is a very important point to remember. The growth of the condylar cartilage is a very unique growth mechanism because it employs both the interstitial as well as the appositional proliferation. Now let's understand what are these terms and why does it happen. The interstitial growth increases the length of the bone as opposed to the appositional growth which increases the bony width. The interstitial growth takes place inside the tissue within the lacunae where the chondrocytes divide and secrete the matrix whereas in case of the appositional growth it takes place on the surface of pre-existing cartilage where the chondroblast and the perichondrium secrete the matrix. Talking about the interstitial growth, the cartilage lengthens and is replaced by the bone tissue whereas in the appositional growth, 
newborn tissue is deposited on the surface of a pre-existing bone. Therefore, finally the interstitial growth results in longer bones whereas appositional growth results in thicker bones. The reason for this unique growth mechanism lies in the histology. So because of the histological similarity between the deepest three layers of the epiphyseal plate of the long bone and the condylar cartilage, just like the long bones of the body, the condylar cartilage also increases by the interstitial growth pattern. Now because of the unique difference which is observed in the condylar cartilage and observed in no other cartilage of the body is the presence of the thick fibrous connective tissue layer which allows for the thickening of the cartilage beneath the fibrous covering therefore increasing by appositional growth as well. This CITER study shows similar findings. So this is the end of the lecture. We studied the condylar cartilage, the basics of cartilage, its zone, its histology, the various growth mechanisms that is the interstitial growth, the appositional growth and the uniqueness of the growth mechanism that is seen in the condyle.